guys, thanks so much for clicking on my channel. We're all sons over here. I am Will Sanja. It's like asking a question. Will Sanja help you keep your smile for today? And hopefully the answer is yes, you guys. I'm going to try not to keep it long, but y'all already know. If it gets good, I'm going to keep on talking. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And go to the next today is pushed into your purpose. Listen, right now, I know some of y'all, not all of y'all, but some of y'all are at a space and in a place to where you're feeling like with the false little feelings that your back is up against the wall. And you're trying to say, why me, God? Why me? Why me? Listen, God knows what he's doing. And even though your back seems like it's up against the wall, you're really being pushed into purpose. You don't believe me? Look at Joseph. His brothers threw him in a ditch and sold him. I'm quite sure why he was in a ditch and why he was being sold. He was saying, God, why have my family done this to me? And you're probably over there saying, God, why my family don't like me? Don't nobody ever come to my house for Thanksgiving. Don't not, nobody ever come and visit me. They don't ever invite me to the family gatherings. God, why, 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 why my family don't like me? Why do I feel like I'm the black sheep of the family? You're being pushed into your purpose. You got to change the way you're thinking over there because you're not been done wrong. You've been done right. Why? Because God has a plan for your life. He knows the way, the thoughts that he thinks of you. They are of peace and not of evil. He has already what? created for you a future and a hope. So don't feel like your back is up against the wall. Know that God has a purpose and a plan for you. And guess what? He's going to fulfill it. He is. You still don't believe it? Look at David. David too was pushed into his purpose. How? Because Saul chased him to kill him. If Saul had never had the spirit of jealousy upon him, David would have never became king. He wouldn't have. God placed the spirit of jealousy upon Saul so that he can chase David to kill him. So that Saul could push David into his purpose. And right now you're dealing with a whole lot of jealous people in your circle. And you say, I thought they were my bestie. I thought they were my ride or die. I thought they had my back. Listen, God got your back. Because he sees further than what you can see. He said his eyes are in every place going to and fro throughout this whole world. And he's what? Showing him, himself strong on your behalf. Because your heart is pure towards him. Therefore what? He is going to set you up right. You're dealing with jealous people in your circle. And some of y'all don't even know you got jealous people in your circle. But they are. They're jealous in secret. They're saying things about you in secret. They are. They are, but you got to remember that jealousy is what pushed David into his purpose. You got to look at Daniel. He was thrown into the lion's den. You got a whole lot of people over there chomping at you like lions. But what happened? God calls Daniel to rest on the lions. Remember, I told you that God said when he's pleased with you, that he will cause your enemies to be at peace with you. In other words, he will shut the, the mouth of the lion. He will. Just know God is doing what? Setting you up. He is pushing you into purpose. He is. Even though that lion is roaring over there. Trying to get on your last nerve. Okay? So you got to remember that. You still don't believe me. You got to look at Moses. Moses was pushed into purpose. When Pharaoh ordered for all the male boys to be killed. And some people in your circle want you to die. They want you to die in your finances. They don't want your marriage to work. They want your children to go to jail. They want you to lose your job. They are hoping and wishing that things die over there. But not so. We, 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 we already get rid of that. Yes, we do. We renounce, we reject, we rebuke that spirit of abortion that's trying to come against what God has called to live in your life. Yes, we do. But you got to remember that that spirit of abortion that they're trying to wish upon you, that it is doing nothing but pushing you into what? Into your purpose. You've got to remember that. You've got to remember that. And last but not least, most of all, Job. Do you remember Job? Job was upright before God, doing everything what, what is right before God. And, and some of y'all are saying, God, I'm doing what you asked me to do. 
God, I'm obeying you. I'm seeking your face. I'm fasting. I'm doing what is right. I'm keeping your word in my mouth. Keeping your word wrapped around my neck on the table of my heart. God, I'm doing according to everything that you asked me to do. But God, look at this before me. Why am I going through this? Why am I in this situation? Why, why, why? What happened with Job? The enemy said, ain't nobody better than me. And the only reason why Job is doing what he's doing to you is because you got a hedge of protection around him. And God has a hedge of protection around you. Didn't he say he will cause his angels to encamp all around you because you fear God? And the enemy told God, if you take the hedge from around him, then watch what he'll do. He'll deny you. He'll stop trusting you. He'll worship other gods. And God said, oh, really? Because God already knew. God knows more than the enemy. God sees farther than the enemy. God knew what he had already placed in Job, just like God knows what he has already placed in you and what he has placed in me. And he knows that our heart is perfect towards him. Therefore, when God has taken the hedge from around us, yeah, you may see all kind of chaos, but you got to remember the story of Job, that Job stood the test, that he held on to God's word. He kept God's word in his mouth on the table of his heart. He continued to trust God, even though his wife was saying, hey, listen, why don't you just deny God? God allowed this sickness to come upon you, your, your children, your, 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 your cows and your cattle and your, your crop. All this stuff is gone to waste. You don't have it anymore. You're sick. Why don't you curse God and die? And what did Job say? You talk as a foolish. You talking crazy over there. And that's what you're hearing in your circle through family members, coworkers, and neighbors. People seeing you facing a situation, they say, man, you should just give up. Why are you still saying God got you, but you're still in that situation? Why are you saying God gonna work it out, but your, your lights got just got turned off? Why are you saying God gonna work it out when they just repoed your car? Why are you still believing in God that he's gonna heal you and you still in a, in a wheelchair? Huh? Why are you still saying God is going to heal you and you still got cancer? You still got diabetes? You still blind? Why are you still trusting God? I'll tell you why you still trusting God. Because you know like I know, oh my goodness, you know like I know that you are being pushed into purpose and you ain't doing this just to get something. You are doing it to please God and because of that, God is going to reward you double. He is. Isn't that what happened to Job? He gave him double for his trouble. And you got to remember that. That even though it feels like with the false of feelings that your back is up against the wall. And that you can't go no further. And that there's something in front of you, but it ain't. <laughs> okay? Because God is the greater than anything. God is greater than anything. He is. But you got to remember that God got you. And he is pushing you into purpose. And that is exactly what happened to Job. That's exactly what happened to David. That's exactly what happened to Daniel. That's exactly what happened to what? Moses, it is. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You remember they put them in the fire because they would not deny God. They would not bow down to the idol. And they said, we're going to trust God. Whether he deliver us out of this fiery furnace or not, we're going to continue to trust God. And little did they know they were going to be pushing them into their purpose. And really, that is exactly what happened. Because after they saw that God delivered them while they were in the fiery furnace, what happened? They set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego up over the land, had high positions, and that is exactly what God is going to do for you. You may feel like you are in a pit in a fiery furnace. You may feel like they have came for you your head. I don't care what it is. Just remember, you are being pushed into your purpose. I'm already at nine minutes. I think I've said it over and over and I think you got this by now. I hope you got this by now. I hope you changed your thinking by now. I hope you really understand that what you are facing right now is not a back up against the wall situation. It is a pushing you into your purpose. You hear me? You're being pushed into your purpose. Because truth be told, sometimes if God don't push us, we won't ever progress. We won't. We won't. Because we'll get too comfortable. 
will get too satisfied. And when you become comfortable and satisfied, you stunt your growth. And God said, I got so much more for you to be, do, and have in the spirit and in this physical. God said through Paul that he wished above all things that we should prosper, be in health, good health, even as our souls should prosper. That's what God says, which means what? He has so much more for us. That's why he says he will do it seemingly and abundantly more than we can ever ask or think. But we gotta be pushed into the purpose. It's a good pushing, even though it feels like your back is up against the wall. Trust and believe. I double dog dare you to trust and believe that your back isn't against the wall. That indeed you are being pushed into your purpose. I hope you got this, but if you didn't get this thing, rewind it and watch again. But in the meantime, in between time, if you take just a little bit of what I'm telling you and apply to your life to the best of your ability, you won't ever, 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 ever the mask a smile. Why? Because your smiles will always be genuine. Be blessed, stay blessed, be blessed, stay blessed, be blessed, stay blessed, be pushed into your purpose. God got a lot for you to do and that future is bright. Y'all know what's coming next. Ciao.